Waba, you are good. Your grace and your mercy endures forever and ever is your faithfulness. Let your words speak. Let the hearts be edified. Let the minds be purged and cleansed of anything that is not of you. Let your words speak, Father. Let your words speak and touch the hearts whom you choose. By the power of Yahweh, by the power of Yeshua. Hallelujah. Amen. First Corinthians, the epistle written by the apostle. The epistle written by the apostle to the assembly in Corinth. First Corinthians 12. First Corinthians 12. But you brothers, I do not want you to go on being ignorant about the things of the spirit. I do not want you to go on being ignorant about the things of the spirit. You know, when we were pagans, no matter how you felt you were being led, you were being led astray by idols, which could not speak at all. Therefore, I want you, I want to make it clear to you that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says Yeshua is cursed. And no one can say Yeshua is Lord except by the Rohaki Dose, except by the Holy Spirit. Verse 4. Now, there are different kinds of gifts. There are different kinds of gifts. But the same Spirit gives them. Also, there are different ways of serving. But it is the same Lord being served. And there are different modes of working. But it is the same God working in everyone. There are different kinds of gifts. But the same Spirit gives them. Also, there are different ways of serving. But the same Lord who is being served. And there are different modes of working. But it is the same God working in all of them. Moreover, to each person is given the particular manifestation of the Spirit. That will be for the common good. That will be for the common good. Verse 8. To one, through the Spirit, is given a word of wisdom. To another, a word of knowledge, in accordance with the same Spirit. To another, faith, by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing, by one Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the ability to judge between the Spirits. Right? To another, the ability to speak in different kinds of tongues. Yet, to another, the ability to interpret those tongues. One, and the same spirit is at work in all of these. One and the same spirit is at work in all of these. Right? Distributing to each person as he chooses. For just as the body is one but has many parts. And all the parts of the body. Though there are many constitute one body so it is the messiah all right verse 13 for it was by one spirit that we were all immersed into one body whether jew or gentile slave or free and we were all given the one spirit to drink verse 14 for indeed the body is not one part but many if the foot says i am not a hand so i am not a part of the body that doesn't make it stop being a part of the body and if the ear says i am not an eye so i'm not a part of the body that does not make it stop being a part of the body if the whole body were an eye how could it hear if the whole body was an eye how could it hear if it were all hearing how could it smell but as it is god arranged each of these parts in the body exactly as he wanted them now if they were just all one part where would the body be but as it is they are indeed many parts yet just one body many parts just one body 
So the eye cannot say to the hand, I don't need you, or the head to the feet say, I don't need you. On the contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be less important turn out to be more necessary. Think on that. The parts of the body that seem to be less important turn out to be more necessary. And upon and upon body parts which we consider less dignified, the body parts we consider to be less dignified, we bestow a greater dignity. Let me say that again. The parts of the body we deem to be less dignified, we bestow more dignity. Think on that. And the parts that aren't attractive are the ones we make as attractive as we can. Think on that. Verse 23, let's read it again. And upon all the body parts which we consider less dignified, the parts of the body which we consider to be less dignified, we bestow a greater dignity. And the parts that aren't attractive as the other ones, we make as attractive as we can. Right? Think on these things. Those who have ears, hear. While our attractive parts have no need for such treatment. Indeed, check this out. Indeed, God has put the body together in such a way that he gives greater dignity to the parts that lack it. Think on that. The Most High has put the body together that he gives greater dignity to the parts that lack it. So that there will be no disagreements within the body, but rather all the parts will be equally concerned for all the others. Thus, if one part suffers, all the parts suffers. If one part is being honored, all the parts share in its happiness. Hallelujah. Verse 27. Now you together constitute the body of the Messiah and individually are all the parts of it. Verse 27, again, now you together constitute the body of the Messiah and individually you are parts of it. And God has placed in the Messianic community first, apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then those who work miracles, then those with gifts of healing, those with the ability to help, those skilled in administration and those who speak in various tongues. Not all are apostles, are they? Not all are prophets, are they, or teachers, or miracle workers. Not all have gifts of healing. Not all speak in tongues. Not all interpret, do they? Eagerly seek the better gifts. But now, I will show you the best way of all. Hallelujah. 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 Let's read it. Chapter 13, verse 1. But now, I will show you the best way of all. I may speak in tongues of men, even angels, but if I lack love, I become merely a blaring brass or a clanging cymbal. I may have the gift of prophecy. I may fathom mysteries and know all things and have faith enough to move the mountains. But if I lack love, I lack nothing. I got nothing. If I lack love, I got nothing. I may give away everything that I own. I may even hand my body over to be burnt. But if I lack love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Not jealous, right? Love is patient. Love is kind. Not jealous. Not boastful. Not proud. Not rude or selfish. Not easily angered and keeps no records of wrong. Love does not gloat over other people's sins, but take the light in the truth. Love always bears up. Love always trusts. Love always hopes. Love always endures. Love never ends, but prophecies will pass, tongues will cease, knowledge will pass, for our knowledge is partial, and our prophecies are partial. But when the perfect comes, all the partiality will pass. Here we go. When I was a child, I spoke like a child. I thought like a child. Argued like a child. Now that I have become a man, I have put away childish things. For now we see in obscurity in a mirror but then we will see face to face now i know partially but then i'll know fully just as god has fully known me but for now three things last trust hope and love and the greatest of these is love pursue love pursue love from the epistle 
the letter written to the assembly in the city of Corinth by the Apostle Shaw, 12 and 13. Let his words speak.